Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. We undermine covenants. There's a way to live in the dispensation of grace. You live by the leading of the Holy Ghost. You live by prophetic revelations from scripture. You live by principles of the kingdom. You live by covenant practice. And finally, you live by counsels and instructions from authorities and leaders that God has placed over your life. Beginning from your biological parents to your spiritual coverings and authorities. If you violate it, you'll be shocked. I show you a few scriptures. Proverbs 11 verse 14. The Bible said, where no counsel is, it said, there the people fall. It said, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Proverbs 15, 22, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. So whether you fall or stand, whether your purpose strive or fail, is at the mercy of counselors, the availability of counselors. Those who rebel against instructions, they have a destination of destruction and doom. Psalm 68 verse 6, it says, God set the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. It says, but the rebellious shall dwell in a dry land. Those who refuse instruction and counsel, they dwell in a dry land. Proverbs 21 verse 16, it said, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. I'm telling you why many people are as dry as a desert. Nobody can talk to them. They know everything, yet they have no resort to show. You are talking about wealth. Somebody is tying towel and twitch his stick and is telling you all oh, these people talking and liars. Oh God, what do you have? One of my teachers told us a, a, a story. He said they were, they were taken to a place to be taught secrets of wealth. And some of the entrepreneurs gathered and the lecturer showed up the first thing was that he was dressed casual. I mean, of course, they say great men are not dressed in gold. When you scratch them, you discover they are made of gold. <laughs> and he, he started talking secrets of wealth. And when he was talking, an, an economist lecturer stood up and said, this principle violated uh, this, was quote his philosophers. The man looked at him. He said, how many million dollars do you have? A guy was earning a few thousand dollars as monthly wages. The man now says, sit down. I'm a billionaire in dollars. I'm not telling you theories. I leave it. I leave it. Somebody is struggling in business. You can't counsel him. When you talk, he say, but this. But if you are talking to somebody who does not have result, and you hear three but, leave him. The only teacher that can teach him is experience. But the problem with experience is that it will take a long time before you learn. You say why? Say but two, but three, but say you are right. The Lord help you. Go. <laughs> Just go. Go and relax. They know everything. You have done it for ten years. That's good. At least you have power for longevity. But where are the results that prove what you are doing? The dispensation of grace is regulated by the covenant of grace because every dispensation is regulated by a particular kind of covenant. There are some dispensations that are regulated. There are, there are some cases where two dispensations can be regulated by one covenant. But by all means, any dispensation you step into, there must be a covenant that regulates it. And this is because of the very nature of covenants. Now, let me help us understand covenant quickly. I'll just define covenant and then I'll show you the five kinds of covenants that have the Bible outlined for us. Five major covenants. What's a covenant? A covenant is a solemn agreement or contract between God and humanity. A covenant is what? A solemn agreement or contract between God and humanity. This agreement is accompanied by promises, conditions, and commitments. The agreement is what? Accompanied by promises, conditions and commitments and this serves as a framework for understanding God's relationship with man it's a solemn agreement or contract between God and humanity backed by promises conditions and commitments 
and it defines the framework for God's relationship with humanity. So when a covenant is at work, know that there's a relationship between God and man. And know that this relationship is beyond a feeling. It's as solid as a contract or an agreement that God can stake his integrity on. And this agreement for it to work, there must be promises, there must be conditions, and there must be commitment from both parties. On the strength of covenant, the faithfulness of God, the love of God, and God's desire for relationship with humanity is revealed. So there is a depth of God's faithfulness, there is a depth of God's love, and there is a depth of God's desire to sustain relationship that we cannot know except as covenant reveals them. For example, when you look at the covenant of grace, for example, what is man to God that will cause God to undertake the kind of sacrifice he undertook to save man? Now, if you understand covenant and you see what Jesus did for man, even when you are not feeling God, you are too assured he loves you. Because the covenant has revealed to you already the extent to which God can go because of you. On the strength of that, I don't relate with God based on feeling. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith, not by feeling. If God will love the world to a point where he strips himself of the privileges of deity, of the status of deity, and he will take upon himself the status of a man, become a slave, and die the death of a criminal just to save me. I don't need any feeling to know God loves me. I don't need any feeling to make my boast in God. Because when he gave Jesus, he gave his best. That means God considers me to be what? What he can give up his best for. So covenants go deep to explain to you God's faithfulness, God's love, and God's desire for relationship. And as you read the Bible, every covenant God gives to man, you hear God say, it will be forever and ever. That means even after I migrate from it, I will still be faithful to it. Anybody who keeps it, I will still honor him. That's why now that we are in the covenant of grace, some people are still practicing the way of Moses. God is still honoring them. Because as far as God remains, his faithfulness is locked into that covenant. But we need to understand the progression of the dealings of God with, with man through covenant so that we can enjoy the fullness of God. Remember, I taught you here before, as touching healing, for instance, I said, in the covenant of Moses, God said, you shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless thy bread and thy water, and he shall take sickness from the midst of thee. So God removes sickness to the degree of your obedience. Are you seeing that? But God now migrated a little and went further. In Isaiah 53, from verse 5, he said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes were healed. So now you see that although it's good to obey God and you will keep obeying God, but your healing is not tied to obedience anymore. It's tied to your faith in the finished works of Christ. He was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him by his stripes. So you are now healed not by your, your obedience, you are healed by his stripes. So if you want to receive healing, all you need to do is to gaze at him that was crucified. And you discover that the power for healing is animated. Are you seeing that? And then God now moved further. And he came to the covenant of grace. And he said, if that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead lives in you, he quickens your mortal body. So now, if I am stirred, healing is released. If I know it. So I can be in church. Worship is going on. Because my spirit is stirred. Healing power can flow out of me. He's no longer in heaven trying to heal me. He's now inside me, flowing out of me like a river. So you see that you can now enjoy more of God than you ever enjoyed. Those who walk to receive healing, they can be sick and be healed. Those who look at the cross to receive healing, they can be sick and be healed. But those who have the Holy Ghost tearing and healing them, they don't just walk in healing, they walk in divine health. Those ones don't fall sick anymore. Anytime there is something they don't understand, a Christ, a kid, they just need a little bit of stirring. Even when they don't have energy to pray, they can play somebody's worship song. And as the person is worshiping, the person is worshiping. After a while, the Holy Ghost rises on their inside. Tears begin to come down and they start feeling that fire. And the thing will go over them and heal them. These ones can kill sickness from its foundation. So you need to understand the progression of the covenant to have the best of God. Are you following? And as you look at the new covenant, you discover God didn't make it with you. God made the first four covenants with us. The fifth one, God had to become man and God made covenant with God as man. Because a check that man failed all, 
and if I continue on this thing will not work that's why in the New Testament even though you are failing God you will still be having certain results because the covenant is between the father and the son it's between God God the father and Jesus Christ but Jesus represented man so it, it is in the new covenant that for the first time the both parties are perfect are you seeing this so I want you to believe this because anything we do we must do it from the standpoint of deep conviction see some of the things I do if I don't have result I leave this world I won't stop doing them but when you are doing something that is result that motivates it know that you are, you are still not built conviction if you find me sick and I can't talk and they bundle me to the hospital you will still hear me declaring that the spirit of God quickens my mortal body the spirit of God quickens. See, that sickness can't make me change my conviction. Even if they say there's no cure, you are finished. I will say it till the day I leave this world. Because for me, my conviction is now deeper. It's like the three Hebrew boys. Our God is able to save us. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow. We believe this thing more than resort. That's when you've known it. That's when you have, you have caught it. So that nothing can make you shift ground. Paul said, what will separate us from the love of God? He was thinking. He couldn't discern that thing that is strong enough to stop him from loving God. But you see, for you to get to this depth, there are things you need to know in God. And one of it is covenant. Now, let me show you how God graduated his relationship with man through the route of covenant. There are five major covenants in scripture. The first is called the Noahic covenant. And so, God was dealing with man in the dispensation of innocence but in between innocence and conscience there was a need for God to establish a covenant because now God's relationship with man must have a basis when Adam was in the garden he didn't need to do anything he was just created to serve God now man has chosen the path of rebellion and so for God to keep having a relationship with him there must be a formal transaction to govern it so a covenant was interjected and so the moment the flood happened and the earth was destroyed the next phase of God's dealing with man between the flood and the promise was a covenant called the Noahic covenant and it was named after Noah because he was the one who caught that covenant with God are you following this Genesis chapter 9 verse 8 to 11 let's read that quickly it said God and God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him saying and I behold I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you so God knows now that he cannot just relate with the man anymore covenant has to create that bridge and he said and with every living creature that is with you of the fowl of the cattle of every beast of the earth with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth verse 11 and I will establish my covenant with you neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by water of the flood neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth so this covenant is called the covenant of preservation because god have seen that the way man is going in iniquity if there is no contract to ensure his safety he will be wiped off because man was almost wiped off the only thing that stopped man was because god saw that noah lived righteously and noah found grace Otherwise, God would have started the project of creation again. Because before that judgment took place, the Bible said, it repented God that he made man. Because the, the imagination of his heart was evil continuously or continually. That means man thought evil only and only evil was his thought. So God literally began to read, why did I make them in the first place? And we wiped them out. And as the Spirit of God was coming to wipe them out, he found a man that had a priesthood. A man who still depended and trusted on God. There's one here. You know, the Bible said the eyes of the Lord move to and fro the earth. So he was moving to and fro the earth before he doesn't just destroy things. He will have to cast his eyes upon it because even the power to destroy comes from the eyes. The eyes of God are like torches. When he looks upon you, flames. You have, do you think the light matches there? Flames come out of his eye. <laughs> That's where judgment is. If you are a sinner and God looks at you, the eye will scan you. He said, man, look on the outward. I, the Lord, I see the earth. He's deeper than radiation. God's eyes are sharper than gamma rays. Sharper than alpha rays. Sharper than beta rays. Sharper than x-ray. Sharper than 
they ray with the highest frequency. He will look upon you and he will cast it on the tablet. Even your thought can be scanned. He said, the prince said, I will exalt my throne and be like the most high. He said, iniquity was found. The scanner. <laughs> Genesis 8 verse 20 to 22. So this dimension of priesthood is locked into sowing and reaping. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered a burnt offering on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of, his, of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything as I have done. Now see, is this not a contradiction? He said, I will not again destroy man because his heart is evil. Is that not the reason why you should destroy him? The, the, the activity of the covenant has blockaded the judgment. Instead of destroying the man, God is smelling a sweet smelling savour. And so God now told him, this thing you have done by prophetic inspiration is a code in the spirit. Now when you study the life of the fathers and the patriarchs, you will discover that some of the things we are arguing here, whether it's right or wrong, they picked it by prophecy. It was because they were codes in heaven. That was why God activated this as a system for mankind. And that's why we call them patriarchs. We call them patriarchs because they were the ones who found the paths in God. They are pathfinders. So hear what God said. He said, why the earth remained? He said, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So why the earth remained? That means this thing will be on earth forever and ever. If a Hindu man sows, he will reap. Because it's what? Why the earth remained. And this covenant is not built in righteousness. It said the heart of man is evil from his youth. So I will use this covenant as a basis to bycott his iniquity so that I can still preserve him. Because I don't want to judge man and destroy man anymore. This is the mystery of the Noahic covenant. Now Jesus came and Jesus reiterated the veracity of this covenant. Luke 6.63. Is that the scripture? Give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, shall you receive in your bosom. Luke 6, 63. Help me quick. Let's see that. So that, that, that's the principle for activating. What's that? Luke 6, 38. That's the technology of what? Activating the covenant of preservation. When you sow, you receive. And Paul came and reiterated this covenant operation after the resurrection. And I will show you why. Because these covenants, God have migrated from them, but the principles remain. Because all of these principles are in Christ. You know, people don't know these things. That's why they have problems. Look at what Paul said, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 to 9, or to 8. This is after resurrection. We are no longer living in the Noahic covenant, but the patterns will not be erased. So when you see people arguing, why are you supposed to give? They don't understand the mystery. That although the covenant has gone, that means when it is the era of the covenant, you are justified based on your doing it. But when the covenant is passed, this is no longer why you are justified. But these patterns can be denied. Paul said, but I say, he which sweat sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He which sweat bountifully shall also reap bountifully. He said, every man according as he proposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. It's a pattern. It's a principle. It was not Noah that designed it. It was God that gave it as a code. He said, and God is able to make all grace. Are you seeing that this pattern has a connection even with grace? God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. Do you see why there are many Christians in the era of grace but they don't have all sufficiency because they have neglected a pattern if you don't give bountifully all grace will not be caused to walk towards you to have all sufficiency so they have the fullness of god and his resources in their spirit but they have negated a code that awakens a dimension of grace so they are not activating provisions in god And every covenant God gives, he leaves a token to show you the blueprint of that covenant and its existence forever and ever. If I have time tonight, I will show you how all of these covenants 
are included in the new covenant. And I will show you that the only difference now is that you are not justified by this practice. You are justified by the works of Christ, but these practices are principles. Even the Mosaic covenant, will you go and start fornicating and say, I'm in the era of grace? Hey, I'm in grace. Nothing matters. And then you live a promiscuous life. You are joking. No? Till tomorrow, God will hate it. Day tomorrow, God will hate covetousness. Day tomorrow, God will hate fornication. That means the Mosaic covenant is not in effect, but the patterns will be kept. Genesis 9 verse 12 and 13. This is the token. So every covenant we touch, I will show you the covenant. I will show you how to activate it. And I will show you the token. The token for this covenant is the rainbow. He said, and God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. <laughs> he said, I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token for a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring the cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature and all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. So that's the token for that covenant. The second covenant God migrated to is the Abrahamic covenant. This giving and receiving, some people are so stingy, they can't engage it. But I want to bless humanity. What do I do? Let me give them a promise instead. And so Genesis 17, God cut another covenant. Verse 4 to verse 7. Follow. I'm showing you why some people, although they don't give, they are still blessed. Because God is out to bless you unconditionally. That's God's heart. There are dimensions in God that are entrusted, but there are generic dimensions in God that anybody can walk in. I will explain that to you shortly. Listen, there are 1,001 preachers. Very few affect their generation because they are tokens for impact. Are you seeing that? So, some things are uncommon. They cannot be gifted. They are entrusted. So, when you are working with God, you have enough for your life. But if you want to assess certain dimensions, you will discover that there are principles that regulate them. There are tokens that regulate them. Because give not holy things to swine. They don't have the value for it. They will trample it under their feet. So, you have to prove that you understand its value through your commitment to the principles that regulate them. Show me. Genesis 17 verse 4 to verse 7. It says for, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Next verse. Neither shall thy name be any more called Abraham, but thy name shall be called Abraham, for a father of many nations I have made thee. Let's stop here for now. Go to Genesis 12 from verse 1. You know he said my covenant is with you. When did he release that covenant? Genesis 12 from verse 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, get thee out from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee. And he said and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. So the emphasis is on the name. That's why he changed it in verse 17 to Abraham. Next verse. And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the nations or the families of the earth be blessed. So this is what God promised Abraham in that covenant. Now, where was this covenant actually caught? Genesis 15. Open it for me quickly. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars, and if thou shalt be able to number them, and he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. The same promise. He's trying to work it out. You know, he said, work out your salvation. So he's trying to work it out. He had been promised in Genesis 12. Now he's trying to work out the protocol. And God is applying the principle of visualization. If you can't see it, you can't have it. So he's using the star to help him. Because these things are ancient realities in God. And then he went to verse 6. He said, and he brought, verse 6 quick. And he believed in the Lord. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. And it came to pass... That when the sun went down and it was dark. Okay. No, go back two verses. I want to show you what happened here. Because God told him to bring animals. 
that we use to cut the covenant. He said, and thou shalt go to thy father in peace, and thou shalt be buried in the good old age. Next verse. He said, but in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. For the iniquity, now he, he told them that his children will be taken into captivity in Egypt, but in the fourth generation, they will be released. So that's the build up of the conversation. And then he collected some animals and butchered them into two and placed the animals side by side. Because those days, when you want to cut a covenant with somebody, a man, both of you will bring animals, both of you, you will divide the animals into two. And then both of you will walk in the blood and your feet will match on it. That contact with the blood. As you are doing it, you now take a vow. That's how covenants are cut in the days of old. So God told him to get animals, butcher it, and divide it into two. As the animals were divided, God now began to talk to him. Now in verse 17, he said, And it came to pass that when the sun went down, and it was dark, behold, a smoke furnace, that's the glory of God, and a burning lamp passed in between the pieces of the animal. So God was the one who actually went through. This technology and this promise was not lost. It was aggregated in Christ. The same way preservation was aggregated in Christ. Because everything that was, was carried over in Christ. So that we will not lose any heritage in God. Are you following this? Now, how is this covenant activated? This covenant is activated through faith. The Noah covenant is activated through giving and receiving. This one is activated through faith. And we read already, Genesis 15 verse 5. He brought him out, showed him the stars, and said, if you can number them, that's how your children will be. And he said, Abraham, believe God. And it was counted to him for righteousness. This is why Paul was teaching in Romans chapter 4 from verse 1. He said, what did Abraham, our father, according to the flesh, found? And he said, it was his faith. He believed God. He believed God. He believed God. So, if you want to activate sufficiency in God, the technology for activating it is faith. Now, the things that the apostles taught in the New Testament, they didn't pick it in isolation. That's why you read the Bible, they'll tell you that the apostles were talking from the Holy Scripture. These are the Scriptures. Also. So when the apostles tell you to give, you will receive. They are showing you a principle that was in a covenant but has now been included in Christ. When the apostles tell you to believe God, they are showing you a principle that was in a covenant but has been activated in Christ. So these things are not in isolation. This is the scripture they preach Christ from. And I will show you how to preach Christ from these truths. Because many people think that the principles and ordinances of God will be lost. Till tomorrow, if you don't believe God, you cannot have God's sufficiency. Till tomorrow, if you don't give, there is a realm of preservation you can't walk in. Because these patterns will never fail. They are called the ancient landmarks. You will never defy them. It's activated through faith. What is the symbol of this covenant? The symbol of this covenant is circumcision. It says, you come out. Come out. And God went further to clarify it. Genesis 17 verse 10. Hear what God said. I'm showing you why people are in Christ. But they are living like slaves. Because they are violating this code. They don't know that these things have been for aeons. And this is how God works. He said, this is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you. And thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. So the token of this covenant is what? Circumcision. So God has migrated from what? Noah and he has come to Abraham. Now why did he start the covenant? Because he saw that humanity was at the brinks of destruction. Man had become too evil. That God has no choice but to destroy man. He took, he took grace that he found in Noah to spare him. So he doesn't want a situation for man to be destroyed anymore. So he, pre he activated the covenant of preservation. So that man will no longer be destroyed. But it is not enough to be preserved. What is the essence of being preserved? And you are dying of hunger. So in addition to preservation, he now added a layer of sufficiency. That's why the Abrahamic covenant came. So you will not be alive but die of starvation. Die of poverty. Die of lack. So all God is doing is to improve the quality of humanity. Because of his love for man. He began by preserving us. Then he now moves to what? Supplying our needs. And he didn't stop there. He now goes to the Mosaic Covenant. Because something to eat. But man has embraced iniquity. So I still need to do something. Because there is something more important than food. Righteous living is superior to having food to eat. It's only a generation of compromise that think food is more important than righteous living. So what do people do? 
they compromise to have food to eat. That is a reverse of the protocol. Preservation is important, but sustenance is more important than preservation. Sustenance is important, but righteous living, character, ethic is more important than food. If food will make you compromise, die of hunger, you are an honorable man. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.